Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of GenAI Vlog. In previous episode, we talked about how to build an app locally using Streamlit application. We also talked about how to pack it in a container using Docker. And then we're saying, hey, look, let's get this onto the cloud, right? So we created a container instance on Azure Container Registry to push this image onto, and then we build a front end, some sort of web app to support that. That's great, right? Because Azure web app give you the API so that the user can access it. So all that sounds great. We can even build in user authentication. But today we're gonna to be talking about how to build a chatbot into it. So that after user login, they can access the chatbot and start talking to it. So with that being said, let's get started. First things first, let me show you the directory. So we do a ls in our terminal window, and then you can see a couple of things. Previously, we have app.py. We have the YAML file taking care of user authentication. We have Docker file to build a Docker image. Remy requirements, which handles the dependencies, things like that. So in this episode, we're going to dive into sections, which is a folder that save all of the helper scripts. And we're going to start from there. So. Here is the chatbot.py script that's living under the sections folder. As you can see here, this is a little bit of a dirty practice because I just tossed everything, and I mean everything, into this one function called run chatbot. As you can see here, we import all of the packages, we load in the environment variable uh, because this manages the API key. Uh, we have a class object that is essentially acting as a helper function. And then we got to build a front end a little bit, right? Sidebar and then sessions, things like that. So it's quite of a dirty practice. Uh, people might argue that, hey, uh, this can probably be in you know, a helper script, right? A couple of functions here, you might want to define that upstream or outside of this function. All that's true, right? Completely agree with all of that. But in this case, I just want to get things to work. Uh, so I'm going to temporarily build something quick and dirty. In the future, we can probably clean that. So let's take a closer look what's inside of this big function. First things first is there's a class object. The class object is instantiated using an open AI API call. So here I'm calling their API, and then I'm also saving and managing the history. Now the history is set up as a a list of dictionary objects, and that is a default data structure for history. Of course, here I have a function to take care of that. And then in the middle, of course, I want to append everything into the history so that this history can grow as the conversation grows. Now, people might get confused. Why on earth do you want to do things this way, right? Why do you want to manage history yourself? Now, the reason I do that is because Streamly application, it's run on a web app that currently in this particular setup is serverless, right? I'm not saying this is better or worse than other options. This is just due to the nature of the current setup. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look at the main body of the app, you see there's a bunch of sessions here being instantiated that is just empty brackets. Now these brackets will grow meaning that we'll put in information in there as the conversation continues. So for example, here, whatever the message is from the system, we're going to append that into the messages in the session state. So same goes with the user prompt. We're going to append that in the messages under session state. And then you make an API call, right? Whatever chatbot class object that you started here, you throw the history in there, general response, and again, append that response under messages, under session state. So now the reason we do this is because this session state messages give us the entire copy of the conversation such that we can make a copy here on line one to two and throw that into the dot history of the chatbot after the chatbot is instantiated. So this way, we can manually control the conversation history such that the large language model can recollect information from the beginning of the conversation. 
So with that being said, now this particular app is pretty much built. All that code lives in one function. And then let's go to the main page. Let's see where that's being invoked. So of course, you got to import it, right? So from sections.chatbot, import everything. And the reason I do that is because everything is in that one function, right? And then line 34 is under this if statement. And this if statement is checking the authentication status. If you are logged in from line 28, this if statement will be true. And if that's true, it will invoke this run chatbot function that we previously defined in this chatbot.py script. And that makes my life a bit easier because now everything is saved in that one function. Uh, so that's the reason I do things this way. So now that we understood that this chatbot is here, we can invoke it. And then we have a way of managing the API key. And the way we manage it is to use a dot in file. And then the dot in file can be ignored because here I have a dot git ignore so that we're not going to push the secrets onto the public repository. So let's test out this app using Docker desktop. And this assumes you have a Docker desktop open, just like what I'm seeing right here. First things first, you say Docker build. Let's tag it, hello world. And then the dot means local directory. Once that's done, let's do Docker run. Dash P means the port. And in this case, we're going to use 8501 as external, 8501 as internal. Call the name hello world. And this will launch the app locally. You can go to the Docker desktop, check out the link. And this will pop out this app. We can test out in the username, the default username and password. Login, boom, and we're all set. Now we can start talking to it. Hi, my name is John. Can you help me? Hello, John. Of course, I'm here to help. What do you need assistance with today? I want a Python code to do some basic algebra. And it's going to give me some code. So I can check the history. And the way we check history is, what is my name? And it better says John, right? Your name is John. And the reason it knows that my name is John is not because the large language model is well-trained, right? It doesn't know that. The reason that it knows it is because we managed our session state, which is our conversation history correctly, such that it can recollect the information from before. So great. Now this test is complete. Let's log out. And we are all set with this local test. But the problem is that this is a local environment. We can only see it because it's in my laptop, but I also want other people to see it, other people to use it. So what do I do? Now, the next step is to push this onto Azure Cloud. So let's close that. Let's shut this down from Docker Desktop. Let's clean this up. So the first thing to do is Docker login, paste the login server here, login succeeded. If this is the first time you're doing this, you will need to watch previous video to check out how to find the username and password. Next, we want to tag the image that we want to push. So Docker tag hello world. That's the login server. We're going to say slash hello world colon latest v. As a personal habit, I typically use latest v number to control the version. So in this case, I'm going to do v4. Because currently in my app, if I refresh, I have v1, v2, v3. The next version, I'm going to call that v4. So let's hit Enter. That tags the image. Now I'm going to do a Docker push, login server, make sure say hello world, and then say latest v4. We hit Enter. This is going to push the image onto the container instance. Now let's go here. Let's hit Refresh. You will see v4, and we are all set. Since now there's a new image in this container instance, let's go to our app and let's click on Deployment Center. And we want to make sure we select the correct image with the correct tag. So Hello World is a correct image. Using this dropdown, 
we can select V4. And then we can say save, and we are all set. Now go to overview, and you can use the default domain to access the app. And this is a live URL endpoint. So let's copy that. To test this, I'm going to use the incognito window, enter the URL, and boom, you are all set. So we can enter just like what we did before using the default username and password, say login, and boom, there you go. Here is the chatbot. So we can start a conversation. My name is Tony. Can you help me? Hi, Tony, of course. Here to help. What do you need assistance with today? I want a Python code to help me find the 10th Fibonacci number. And there you go. That's a Python function that helps us find the 10th Fibonacci number. And to test out that it recollects information from previous history, you can say, what is my name? And we'll say, hey, you know, your name is Tony. And again, it knows that it's Tony because he saw it from the previous history in this current conversation. It did not come from the training data. So that completes this test on the public URL up and running. Let's log out. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.